Savvy, 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 that's the name you should know Savvy, 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 he's the host of the show With the games from the past, he's ready to cast Savvy! Yeah. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of the Savvy Show. It's your host Savvy and I'm bringing you the show where cool peeps do dumb stuff. Now this is coming from the past actually because this episode is going to come out uh, in a very later date. We're recording currently this the 20th of June if I recall. Yeah, we're recording this uh, at this date. And I gotta say, I don't know if the episode will be happily received, if you guys will enjoy that series, but here's hoping that you will enjoy the first episode of the Savvy Show that is going to be with uh, Sonico, if everything goes planned. So if you enjoyed that episode, thank you for your support. Now, today we're back with another content creator that I admire very much. They are a wonderful person, and not only that, they are also a wonderful friend, and also they made some very, very fucking cool content. They made some very good uh, videos, and today we're just going to discuss the creative process, the editing, and everything that we discussed in the first episode will be also discussed here. So please welcome with a warm applause. My boy, Mikel. Hello, Mikel. How are you? Hello, hello. Uh, hello, Savi. How are you doing? I'm doing very well today. I'm doing very good, thanks for asking. It's a pleasure having with you here. So, since like people watching right now may not know you who you are, uh, could you just introduce yourself briefly? Um, I make Kirby content on YouTube. I am not really that well-known compared to the likes of, say, Meteors or Shock Hat or uh, my, go my good friend here, Savi. But I will say that, you know, I, I do enjoy making Kirby content. I make the um, Kirby Court series, which is really just me rambling about characters that I like or characters that I may be very fond of. And it's, uh, yeah, I, I do things like that. I may do more in the future at this current time. I may do more in the future. But um, yeah, Mikel McFry. My gimmick is fries, by the way, if it wasn't already apparent. That's right, guys. I got the creator of the Kirby Kart series here with me, and they also make some Kirby content. You may see a pattern because, like, the first episode was also from a Kirby content, but it's just because I found myself very happy with each and every Kirby content creator because they're all very wholesome people. And, I, and this is coming from someone in the JoJo community, which is one of the most toxic communities of all time, so it's a breath of fresh air coming here and seeing all of these wonderful people. Now, the thing is, I wanted to discuss, first of all, how did you, this is a question that I do to everyone, how did you get into YouTube content creation? Well, oh my god. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure not lots of people remember the Kirby and the Forgotten Land hype cycle. How we have the first trailer drop and watching people's reactions to Kirby and the Forgotten Land, especially Kirby fans' reactions. That was the funniest thing I've ever seen, mainly because yeah, I was so excited. Funny. Yeah, <laughs> there were. Actually, I think the first person that I did see react to it was Channel Kirby. Uh, yeah, I was thinking like shoutouts to Channel Kirby. They're also a Kirby content creator. They have an amazing voice, like <laughs> no cap. And also like, yeah, I remember the reaction. One of the most remarkable reactions was <clears throat> Dexus. It is like a very good friend of the channel. We also collaborated a few times because they went, um, I'm going to probably put it here, headphone warning users. Uh, he went uh, batshit insane and it was very fun seeing everybody going crazy. I myself like screamed a lot and it was cool just seeing Kirby fans collectively agreeing on, on the fact that this game was like a revolution. So, as you were saying? Oh yes, I just... <laughs> as you mentioned, uh, Dex is another friend of mine. He, he Losing his crap was hilarious, watching him lose his crap. But it wasn't until the next trailer that came out of nowhere, from my perspective at least, because here they dropped it at 7 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> and I wasn't even up. I think someone started texting me, everyone started texting me, hey, there's a new trailer, new trailer. And I went, new trailer? No. No, they don't mean Kirby. And I turn on my phone, I'm oh my god, they mean Kirby! It's a new Kirby trailer. And after that trailer, I said, you know, 
I want to be. I, I just. I just want to express how much I love Kirby. I, I just want to. I don't want to be a part of. Well, I don't have to be a part of anything big. I don't have to have three gajillion subscribers or anything like that. But I just want some people to hear my voice when I talk about Kirby because talking about it in my head and having conversations about Kirby in my head that that won't do anymore. <laughs> so I joined um, after the second trailer, and I felt that you know making content about Forgotten Land would be pretty spiffy if i do say so myself fair enough if i remember correctly one of your first videos was, was actually about like the big scandal because like back in the day when you we used to have the uh, big um, hype wave we also had that little bit of scandal with like that uh the kirby fans were uh, very 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 not very happy with uh, the presence of elflin because they all thought who the hell is this guy he's he going to betray us and I remember that one of your first videos was very effective because you literally explained in great detail that everything that, like, your own opinion on Kirby. And, I mean, it's pretty wholesome to me uh, because, like, um, like our first guest, both of you, uh, like, decided to do content just because the, you wanted to talk about, like, um, the series that you loved. And that's something that I very much admire. So something that is going to sum down is the fact that, like, how did you end up um like uh into the kirby series how did you start playing kirby how did you discover the franchise i discovered actually the franchise long ago when i was around maybe th three or four i was really young i was i was young enough for running around the house to be one of my pastimes and one of those times i was running around the house you know how parents do when when they're in the kitchen cooking or if they're cleaning up and they say look I need you to sit down right now and watch TV and just don't get up until I'm done. <laughs> yeah. So my mom did that. She put me down in front of the TV. And one of the things that was um, playing on the TV was the Kirby right back at you anime. And one of the first episodes that I ever saw was that one episode where I think the um, Mabel, the fortune teller, she was, I think it was that Moses episode where she just did a Moses reference. But I, I came into that, yeah, through that. Um, it was it was funny. I watched it. And then years later, I realized, oh, wow, Kirby's a video game series. Because 2008, the commercial started playing on TV for Kirby Superstar Ultra. And I looked at it, thought it was dumb, said, no, I'm not going to play it. And then I go yeah, to... Super, the, the, like the Pink Puff Super Tough commercial, however it was. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was, that's super good. Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm very glad you remember that. I'm surprised you... Yeah. No, I shouldn't be surprised you remember that. Um, I'm a Kirby nerd, so yeah. <laughs> fair, fair. It was then we went to the video store and I wanted to get New Super Mario Bros. DS, but that was taken. So I said, all right, what isn't taken? Kirby wasn't taken. I said, am I really going to play this? I got it anyway, thinking it was going to be boring. After I beat Spring Breeze... The rest is history. That's a very cool story. It's actually very similar to mine because uh, back in the day, uh, I used to share my uh, DS with my sister. And then the DS broke because uh, little old Savvy didn't understand that it was only the bottom screen that was like with the touch screen, not the, the top one. And <laughs> that was very dumb. So the DS broke and my father said, well, the 3DS is coming, so we're going to get the 3DS. And so we got the 3DS. And um, uh, my father uh, said to my older sister, she, he said to her, you know, there's this cool game I heard about. It's called uh, Kirby Triple Deluxe. And I was like, well, what's this game? Uh, sounds like a stupid, dumb thing. But little did I know, I played the game and I fell in love into it. Because as a kid, I sucked at video games. I was very, very bad at video games. Uh, like, um, I used to play some new Super Mario Brother games, I used to play a lot of different things, but, like, every time I, I'd i play one of those games, I would, like, beat a level or two and then just get stuck to a boss or something, and I thought they were just kind of unfair, because, you know, I'm savvy the gamer now, but, like, uh, when I was a kid, I wasn't so much gamer, you know? I was very bad at everything, so I decided to um, play this game, and it was so good, because it... And it wasn't easy, because I did play, like, I remember playing, uh, and this is gonna be dumb, you're probably gonna laugh at this, uh, one of the other games I had for my 3DS was Wreck-It Ralph, 
for the the 3ds because like my my parents gave it to me and that game was super easy but it was so badly designed because i'm going to put some footage here or something but the levels were bland and unoriginal like they were based around the game but the game was like 10 minutes but no kirby was completely different i was like wow this is wild this is insane you can you can jump you can suck your enemies and years later i would um like play kirby's return to dreamland or well kirby's dreamland wii as we know here here in italy and that game also blew my mind because like of the immense story and the multiplayer the, the multiplayer was awesome because i used to play this game with my sister and my cousin it was it was very cool it was very interesting and then years later i would see the anime on tv kirby right by Katcha, and we had this blessing that uh it's kind of just a little bit of also the savvy show trivia as you guys have heard, as even Mikel himself knows, the intro of uh, the Savvy Show is a parody of the uh, the Kirby Rock by Katcha intro. And that was me because uh, when I was a kid, I was super obsessed with the... Savvy, that Savvy, Savvy, that's the name you should know. So it turns out that Mikel has not uh, heard the intro yet, which is embarrassing considering that he helped making the, the original theme song as he he like included like one of the uh some of the original lyrics so i'm just going to send the file okay is this the one i'm looking oh yeah this is the one i'm looking for so we're gonna have a live macau reaction this was he's the host of the show yeah coming at you savvy yeah, I love that we just put the acapella sounds and like the, uh, the like you know, the snapping. As you can hear, it was so good. Like I, I'm very, very, very proud that the Toxic could handle the the theme song. Yeah, I was just about to say that seems like it's <laughs> seems like it was Toxic Peace voice. Yeah, and I also love how you just uh, like mode of this voice just to be like very similar to uh, the original singer's voice so back to the original thing i was saying like i love the theme song so much that i put it in, into a very old nokia phone because like the channel where the hair the the kirby anime wasn't actually airing the version with the italian theme song because we also have an italian theme song that goes like to to kirby to to kirby but it wasn't that version it was the American version, and I am proud because then I got obsessed, and then I based the uh, the intro of the Savvy Show on the uh, the the Kirby Rock Bacacha theme. Now, moving on to the next question, um, something that you have said that your and I quote your own personality is based on fries. Uh, how did this fry love started? Um. Actually, I think this is a, par a story that my parents could explain a little bit better, but they're not here right now. <laughs> so I'll just try to remember. They said that when I was younger, I didn't eat that many foods. I was the type of person who would just, you know, eat small things like uh, small food, small snacks. Yeah. And when I was yo even younger than that, I was told that I wouldn't eat dinner. I would drink something like Pediasure. I think that's some type of milk for younger children maybe toddlers oh, yeah. babies i'm not sure but one of the first restaurants i went to was mcdonald's and that wasn't like a big experience but what i was told is that they went to the drive through my parents and i and they got food and apparently i said i want mcdonald's too and they said okay all right we'll get you some and they got me a happy meal and they turned around for one second it turned back around and it, it disappeared. It just disappeared. Wow. <laughs> and apparently I kept saying I loved the fries the most. And since then, fries have been one of, if not my favorite foods. That's uh, actually a very awesome story. Now, getting <laughs> back more on track to the, to the questions related to your channel. So, a uh, big part of your channel, because I have like the page right here, uh, was Kirby in the Forgotten Land, as you said, but like actually playing the game, do you think it was worth the wait? Do you think like it was as good as you imagined, or was it underwhelming? 
I think it was just as good as uh, I imagined. It didn't underperform. It didn't surpass my expectations. It, it met them right there. It was a very amazing experience. The music, the levels, the copy abilities, the music, <laughs> the music. It was it was a very entertaining time. I really loved it. Yeah, because like uh, playing back again, just played a little bit off. Kirby in the Forgotten Land today because like uh, when I have my free time I play a little bit of the post game adventure and I have to say the game is not that long but like when it lasts it's so good like it's chef kiss it's easily uh, 9.5 out of 10 if not 10 out of 10 because it's just Kirby just the way we imagine Kirby and I mean I think that they made an amazing amazing job at transporting and translating the Kirby gameplay in 3D. Now, <clears throat> something that I wanted to ask you is a little bit on some uh, on the creative process, because you have different series on your channel. You have the Kirby Kart series, you have the Beast Pack, you have a lot of different things. So, uh, for everyone maybe watching, what is your type of creative process? Like, what, how, what do you do prior to releasing the videos and scripting them? How do you get the ideas for those videos? Well, um, I think this might be a little, a, a, a little out there, or maybe it's something that everybody does. But the creative process that I normally have for most of my videos is I start with thinking about what a Kirby anime would look like if it came back, and oh. I I don't. Um, I'm sorry. And I, I was just surprised because it's kind of like very out there yes it, it's it's very out there like I, i'm not trying to make a kirby anime i could never do that but what i guess it's what motivates me because i just want to see the characters <laughs> do things even outside of the games and sometimes i guess that that motivation i i sometimes wonder if i were to picture a kirby anime how would the characters be and like how like what would they be like and i figured it would be funny if i could interact with them sometimes and i guess that right there captures what i'm really going for sometimes like i, I want to convey this idea that i'm somewhat living in the kirby world i know that sounds childish but living in the Kirby world and, and, you know, bringing content or recording content or whatever that makes whoever watches um, entertained, I, I guess I can somewhat do better on that. But just being there is something that I've wanted to do, something that I've wanted to uh, try, just being with the characters, even if I don't, <laughs> if that's not real, but it's just fun. It's just like a little sort of childish dream that I sort of held on with me for a while and I just figured that doing it now would be kind of cool in my opinion. I mean, in my opinion, it's not like as childish as you said because it's very understandable because everyone has different links with uh, these characters and these different universes and words, so it's, um, it's actually very good to see that you have a, such a strong link with uh, these characters so that uh, like everything feels much more more alive and as you said like you do in my opinion a very wonderful job um, putting the Kirby characters into your videos because they all are uh, they hold so much personality like one of my favorite videos of yours has to be the uh, the Mennonite video that uh, no no yeah the Mennonite video and also the King Dedede video just because like the ju the character of the judge and like everything else that happens, like your sense of comedy just uh, makes me chuckle up every time I see one of your videos. So hats off to you for making such entertaining content. And I think that it's also very wholesome how you uh, you imagine it to be. Like it's not even childish in my opinion, because uh, deep down I think that uh, every one of us watching um, is a very like has a very strong connection with a lot of different video game series. Like I have a very strong connection with. And yeah, this is gonna sound childish, like 100% with Super Mario 64. Anytime I boot up the game, I just roam around in the environments and I found myself just wandering around, like, eyes wide open and being like, wow, this is, this is wild. I cannot imagine, like, it's a very outdated game and I have to realize that 
it's objectively not very good, the camera was not very good, the some levels were stinkers, but just roaming around in Princess Peach's castle or Bobo Battlefield or whatever just like brings back my my little childish imagination and I'm I'm very happy that like we we're still just kinda carrying this type of like um, childhood magic because I think it's a very good way of like bringing back those memories and also it like just awakes those creative juices as I call them so yeah it's a very good thing so oh, one thing I would like to ask is when <laughs> when Kirby in the Forgotten Land was revealed where were you and how did you react? Oh, that's a very cool question. Thank you for asking me. Um, I actually have a video on my channel that has like the reaction and it has a very funny story because that same day I had a wedding. So I was like, <laughs> this is going to sound very bad, but at the entire time of the wedding, I was checking my clock being like, oh my God, this is going to be the Nintendo Rex soon. Oh my God, I got I to I I rush. But then at the end, the wedding, like, and uh, the two hours before the, the direct and it was it was very magical because i remember sitting down it was the same direct if i recall that announced uh, chris pratt as mario kazuya from tekken joining super smash brothers and all those other stuff uh, so like i uh, i remember that like i was very confused at the start i thought though it was just going to be a 3d platformer an indie game of sorts and i said like yeah the, the environments look very good the trees look very good but then it was like what is this a fade in an island what is this crash bandicoot and then uh, i just screamed kirby because i saw the kirby and i was like that's wild because a Kirby game was the last thing I was expecting from that Nintendo Direct because looking at that Nintendo Direct it was generally one of the craziest events that uh, like of that here because yes we got Chris Pratt yes we got Splatoon 3 uh, we got so many different projects and it all was with pacing that like could keep me at uh, the edge of my seat because I was like wow that's Kirby and uh, down the rabbit hole I went down the the hole of insanity as I just started to speculate with all my friends I was like what's the plot gonna be what's anything going to be like there were, I remember there were a lot of people that were speculating that Magalore had to do something with the plot because of the star portals and also because of the theme parks. But I never actually like thought that that idea could be possible. But I remember having this idea, thinking that Elfwyn was a good guy, but I thought that in the end he was gonna die. And I mean, I, eh, I don't, I don't know. It was just, like <laughs> kind of complicated situation. I'm just gonna put. Uh, Spoiler warning here, because the next question that I have here on the script is going to be Kirby and the Forgotten Land spoiler related. Just to make sure, Mikel, you have finished the game, right? Five times, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so how did you... Okay, I'm just going to leave two more seconds. Pause the video right now, or you'll regret this because it's an awesome game. If you haven't yet, please buy the game, play it. So... Mikel, how did you feel about the ending of uh, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, the final boss, and just the post-game everything, like adventures and levels? The last part of the game. Wow, that was a <laughs> that was a roller coaster. Um, I think I, I I pictured another GD fight. That was nice. That was cool. I guess the the first time throughout that entire sequence when I started actually being surprised and started screaming and started laughing is when he started running on all four <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was the funniest thing i've ever seen and i'm just like kumazaki i know you do Diddy's vocals but you're in the studio barking and <laughs> it's actually sounding really cool um the scene with ddd saving the waddle d that actually made me cry that actually made like I was I was like oh he's so cool and I was tearing up. It was like yeah he's like the cool dad that saves himself and yeah that actually kind of made me tear up. Uh, but like a scene that made me tear up was the fake of of uh, Elflin Elflin's death. Oh that, my goodness. That made me cry like a little bitch. <laughs> Sorry if you like just say it like this but like 
I cried so much because you have to understand I just saw the last part when he said like thank you Kirby thank you for everything and I closed my eyes because I were, as I was already crying and so there's just one final cutscene where like Kirby looks around and then he smiles hinting at the fact that Elfin is, al is alive but you gotta understand my eyes were closed in that moment so I thought he was dead and gone forever and so I cried <laughs> so much oh no <laughs> I was like, oh no, Elfin, why? Why are you dead? I love you so much. <laughs> and yeah, like, <laughs> it was very funny. How would yeah, you I, I think, uh, react to that moment? <laughs> that moment. I think I did sort of like you. I think I actually still do have my reaction of the final events of the game. Um, at least from Fecto Elfless onward. But when that happened, I was like, wait a minute, no, no. Because I, I always expected that he would do some type of sacrifice play at the end. And I said, wait a minute, no, it's about to happen, isn't it? And I kept saying, it's happening. No, no, he's going to he's gonna do it. And he sacrifices himself. And I'm just like, oh, okay, time to cry. And I started crying. And I guess from a writing standpoint, I'm not, I'm not Shakespeare, all right? But from a writing standpoint, I guess I would have maybe preferred if Elphalyn was gone a little bit longer. I, I, I would have liked it if he came back, but the amount of time, it just felt so short. But yeah, still, like, I wasn't like complaining. Finding him uh, like in the post-game adventure, like I would have loved something like finding him in like the third or like fourth level of the post game so you like it was a big surprise and then who like wouldn't have completed the game would have just thought that he was like dead and gone forever like i have to totally agree with you in this one absolutely i was thinking that too that would have been a a, a nicer way to handle things <laughs> yes also i have to ask you something that hasn't had to like to do with kirby nor it has to have to do like with anything video game related i know this is a gaming channel but I'm going to talk about something very, very different. Your favorite manga, if I recall, is One Piece, right? Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, so <laughs> I wanted to ask you something. As someone like me, or like someone um, external to the One Piece franchise, how would you like hype up the series? How would you convince me to uh, read or watch One Piece. All right, I'm gonna give you the the, uh, the shorter version because I could be here all day. But um, <laughs> it's it's relatively good. It's relatively good, and it's just factually great. It's just it's it's really amazing. I think that what turns a lot of people off from the series is there 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 are two things: the character designs and the amount of episodes oh, and i'm, I'm saying you... the amount of episodes later this is what, oh yeah spoilers, <laughs> it's planned for the the savvy court thingy <laughs> we're going oh. to talk about that <laughs> oh understandable but um it's I, I just say to convince somebody i just say give it a chance just don't listen to what anybody else says heck i can talk about it but don't even listen to what i have to say if you just want to get into it, either read it or watch it. Just just see for yourself if it's something that you'd like to see. And if you want to see more, um, buckle up. <laughs> That's all I can say. Like I I have saw a lot of people on I have seen like a lot of people on Twitter uh, arguing, but like I, first of all, Twitter, am I right? Second, uh, oh. I've seen a lot of people like criticizing the designs, and in my opinion, that's one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. Because it's like, oh no, big boba lady, uh, my stupid child ass is going to cry. Why? Like, Twitter is the, the most, <laughs> I think we can both agree on this one, is one of the most toxic places in the internet. Absolutely. I, I think it's a cesspool. I think that if you want to get rid of each and every last piece of garbage you own in your house, dump it off on Twitter, because everyone's takes are already trash, and it won't make any difference. Sheesh, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's right, though. Uh, because, like, everyone complains about everything. Like, uh, I saw some, some like, uh, some time ago that most of the people on Twitter complain about things that they do not know about. Like, I saw someone saying, 
Oh my god, Jojo is bad because he like stereotypes his women and like treats women um, and fictional female characters in a very bad way. When part 6 is entirely made up with female characters that are... It's not like the Demzo in distress. It's actually strong characters. Actually, do you know Jojo? Yeah, I think um, I left off around somewhere at the beginning of part 3. Um... Uh, I have to agree with you. I don't think Jojo like mishandles their female characters. I don't think Lisa Lisa was mishandled. And just as you said, part six, I don't know much about part six, but from what it seems like, Jolene seems like a very strong independent female character. And there's really no doubt that she's being handled well if this is the reaction that the community from Jojo and people in general will have of her. Yeah, he was like the entirety of part six actually, not only just Jolene, there was like Hermes, FF, and but I mean like Twitter. As we said, it's full of people just going crazy over the tiniest things. Actually, have you seen the uh, the Summer Game Fest? I have, I have. So you uh, must have seen the new One Piece game. That looks amazing in my opinion. Oh yeah, that, that looked like a movie. I'm... I'm kind of confused as to how good that looks. I, I need I need to play this game soon. I hope it's really amazing. I mean, I wanted to get like in a small argument here, like a civil discussion. I think that like with the years passing, uh, 3D models to represent anime characters are becoming much, much, much more like appropriate. Like I don't think that they'll ever uh, replace actual 2D art. But I'm seeing like the new One Piece game, and also I don't know if you remember the. Uh, the predecessor to Jump Force, J-Stars, uh, what was it called, J-Stars Victory vs. Plus, yeah, that was the name, mm -hmm. uh, that game was, like, amazing, so, uh, I don't know if you're going to disagree on this one, but I think, of, like, 3D models can work very well with anime if they're, very, like, handled well. No, I, I agree with you, I definitely do, because you, you'll have really amazing models, like, uh, say, Dragon Ball Fighters Z, or I don't know how people say that, or just like um, the the new JoJo game. That those models look amazing. Yeah, they, but yeah, if they're handled well, that's great. They just translate the art style of the series to like uh, 3D, and then there's some games like Jump Force. Do you remember about Jump Force? I try not to. <laughs> <laughs> it was very very bad. Those models made me kind of. Uh, gag, if I do say so myself. Ha. Huh. Maybe it wasn't the models, I guess it was just everything else. I mean, the thing is, the gameplay was actually, like, decent, and it was, like, kind of fun. It was very easy, but it was fun. But the models looked like, you know those very cringy RTX on memes? When they just make the character oh. realistic? <laughs> That speaks to it. They just spanked the model of Goku, Luffy, Jotaro, and like a lot of Shonen Jump heroes, and then, bam, just RTX on, bam, particle effects, lighting. I think the the funniest part is how they didn't even have that many. The, the story mode is what I mean to say. Very. The story mode is it's very bad. Like, they just had to put Like Yagami in the story just because Death Not sells. Like, why? It was so forced and felt like, you know Sonic Forces? It felt like Sonic Forces, but even more fanfiction. Stop, please. <laughs> if, if I talk about Sonic Forces, I'm gonna rant. <laughs> no, we, we can discuss about Sonic Forces if you want. <laughs> um... Sonic Forces, yeah, that's that's a game that exists. I'm glad Sonic Frontiers is starting to clean up Sonic's image, and so so is the movie franchise and Sonic Prime soon. But Forces was not it on so many fronts. It wasn't even just the gameplay. That's just the tip of the iceberg, and that's a large iceberg. Yeah, like I mean, the I think that the biggest problem was like the fact that they quote unquote abused the presence of classic Sonic. Like the big thing was like classic Sonic in the Generations games was so cool because you could see the character and you're like wow that's just like the character from sonic generation because he's meant to represent a certain era of sonic but then sonic forces comes in and said fuck it we don't care about sonic like we don't care about classic sonic let's just put him in 
like Sonic Mania handled classic Sonic so well, then Sonic Forces comes and said, yeah, sure, let's just put him in. And that's it. So now that we have done the serious questions, we're going to turn in something very stupid. As we've talked into this video, we um, have discussed how Mikel has a series called A Kirby Court, where he and some of his guests talk about the like Kirby characters. And so I thought about taking that idea and stealing it without any credit. <laughs> Jokes aside, uh, I thought about getting this idea and just kind of spinning it, like kind of spinning it and we now have, we're just gonna change the scenario. And I'm gonna be with my nice suit. Michael is gonna be with his nice suit. As you can see, we're in, in our courtroom now. And we're going to discuss three different opinions. The thing is, these three opinions are three very shitty takes. So what we are going to do is, we are going to have a number generator that is gonna have either a one or a two. I'm gonna be two and Michael is gonna be one. And whoever lands, like whoever the generator decides, has to agree with this shitty take and try his best to explain why the opinion is correct. So I'm just gonna keep it vague. Would you like to start, Michael, with the Kirby argument, the Sonic argument, or the One Piece argument? Uh, we can start with the Kirby argument. Okay, so this is gonna be very controversial. I do not think this. Please keep that in mind. Okay, it's number two, so it's me. I have to agree with the Kirby take that is, and I quote, Kirby is always the same, as in every game feels very similar to each other. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be bad. And so, oh my god. I'm going to start, and this is gonna be very bad because I love the Kirby series. I, I, I would love to do a nerd accent, but no. Okay, so, <laughs> today, I'm going to prove my argument, and I'm going to tell everyone here watching that Kirby is always the same. Just the beta cocks that have never played Fortnite before enjoy Kirby. Because Kirby is not only for kids <laughs> is not only for kids, but it is also bad. Because every game is the same, you know? Like Kirby Star Allies, it was the same as the Game Boy one. Kirby's um, Dream Force or shit. <laughs> 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 okay. okay, so it's always the same. The level designs are the same, the enemies are the same, the boss fights are all unpredictable. It's just push and buttons, left and right, left and right, and that's it. That's each and every Kirby game. Mikel, share with us your wrong opinion. <laughs> your wrong opinion. <laughs> OBJECTION! <laughs> well, uh, my totally one correct uh, opinion, by the way, uh, Kirby is not always the same as the games are able to spice up the, the gameplay with either gimmicks or with a level design or with uh, different copy abilities. The copy abilities definitely spice up the gameplay in uh, many areas and you can uh, control Kirby uh, differently. Say for instance, Water Kirby and Cutter Kirby are two entirely different abilities. You can surf through the levels, um, shoot water sprouts, uh, drown uh cutter kirby throws blades uh cuts rope and they can be used to solve puzzles in entirely different ways and bosses are not the same let's look at wispy woods he's a tree yeah facing the left part of the screen but he's been a giant mechanical plant he's been a flower he's been old those are all different completely different well objection let me do my anime laugh now, <laughs> because you fool, you've done a huge mistake. You've proven the worst, <laughs> you've proven the worst point. Wispy Woods represents the modern and old Kirby series. First of all, you said that Wispy Woods is on the left, but as a Kirby nerd, you should know that Wispy Woods is always on the right. That's right, I, I caught your fake Kirby-ness. <laughs> what, what the hell am I saying? So, <laughs> okay, so... 
in Wispy Woods is a bad boss because it's just a, a tree. Like, look at any other game, like Final Fantasy VII, the best game of all time. It has a house. It has a guy, which is shirtless. It has so many different bosses. Does Kirby have shirtless dudes? Hmm? Yes. Yes. Yes, Kirby has buff DDD, who is... Um, <laughs> yeah, I forgot. 40 <laughs> 40% shirtless. <laughs> okay. So put your closing argument now so we can move <laughs> on to the next. Um, closing argument. Um, Kirby is coming to your house and eating you in your sleep. <laughs> That's the most normie joke I could make. Sorry. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's good. This entire thing is like made to be cringe. Okay, so the <laughs> next argument is something that is going to be defended by my man, Mikel. And the argument is, Sonic was never good. Which is very weird, but like, let's see what you have to say defending this case, Mikel. Well, Sonic was never good because it's always bad. As you can see, Sonic is running. Why is he running? Left to right, front to back, 3D, 2D, does it matter? He's encouraging kids that they should run indoors as Sonic instead of outside as productive members of society. So I think that Sonic is bad because it encourages kids to embrace laziness. Therefore, it's mid bad. And I think it's horrible and 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 it sucks there. Objection! <laughs> Sonic is actually a very good franchise because the main goal of running is because that's the main thing. Running has been a thing for every single game ever. Mario has running. Bubsy... Does, does Bubsy have running? Yeah, but Bubsy has running. Um, any game you can think of, it has running. Metal Gear, running. Everything. So running, it's because it's speed. People, it's, that, that's the thing they want to achieve. Speed. And also because the gameplay is centered around pinballs. People love being pinballs. People love seeing balls bounce all over the place. People love bouncy balls. <laughs> People love <laughs> <laughs> People love this kind of stuff. So it's made so that the gameplay is faster and fun. And also because Sega really wanted to flex on their uh, like fast chip for the Sega Genesis. And now since I want you to to prove yourself wrong, to just show you how bad and unfunny, unbased your argument is, I'm just gonna ask you. If Sonic was always bad, then how come the, not only the classic games, but also Generations and Colors, and also the fandom may be weird, but it's still a very good thing that, you know, almost beat Nintendo. So. Tell me, if it was a bad game, how could it have been beaten Nintendo, almost? <laughs> when is it Nintendo? Well, it's 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 still bad, even though it almost beat uh, Nintendo, because Nintendo um, had a sinus infection, so they fell off for a while. Um, Sonic is still bad because um, it it <laughs> it eats toilet paper. It just engulfs entire rolls of it into its mouth. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, all they eat is toilet paper. And I think that if you do that, you are a sick individual in need of the electric chair. And I will eliminate each and every last person who does so. So I think everyone who does that should wash their back, including you, Sonic. You're not safe from me. Time to go to electric chair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to cut this joke. I have to, to cut this joke 100%. So. I should not have said that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The, this is the funny thing about the Savvy Show. I don't care about monetization because I do not make the money yet. So, fuck it. We can say anything that you want. Okay. So, you think that this argument was good? But it wasn't. Because I eat toilet paper as a fellow Italian. Everybody knows that pasta is made out of toilet paper. Ragu is just shit. You know, it's all made out of toilet paper. It's all made out of toilet paper. First of all, you're racist against the toilet paper <laughs> enjoyers. So, so I'm going to tell Sega, I'm going to tell my mom that you despise toilet paper enjoyers. And Sonic, 
Sonic never fell down because that's the beauty of Sonic. We had Sonic 3D Blast, we had Sonic Unleashed, even though it was a like, pretty good game, not so good, maybe not so bad. We had Sonic Boom, we had so many bad or maybe not goodish games. We had Sonic 06, Sonic Forces, this, that, but Sonic has always managed to not fall down. That's sorry, take that Twitter user and he just stand up every time and that's the beauty of it it's like a beautiful metaphor to life it just stands up and continues and achieves new things so that's right i rest my case that's why sonic was always good now Mid. we have our last argument and Mikel is going to i think uh close this call uh, take a gun shoot, <laughs> shoot my head and uh, tell myself to fall off my horse and that is you'll have to defend the argument one one piece is too long if you want oh, to okay <clears throat> Actually, One Piece is too long because there's over one more billion episodes! I think it would have been better if it ended at Season 3, where my favorite anime ended. Because it's better. You know what? It's just mid. Why do I want to watch one more billion episodes of The Treasure Was The Friends We Made Along The Way? No, 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 no. Get this out of here. We don't want this. We want, we want real shows. Like, like... Uh, uh, what's what's I don't know, anything uh, else? Uh, seven frames per second sins, uh, and also that one gay ghost show with the dudes whose muscles are the sides of bullet trains. And and I, I think those are 10 out of 10. I think those are 10 out of 10, and one piece is in the dirt, plus ratio, plus you fell off, plus I eat people. <laughs> okay, you know. It was a pretty good argument because you mentioned how much you like the gay ghost with uh, with uh, gay people in Italy, but you have mentioned something. You mentioned the ratio. You mentioned that you eat people, but you have not mentioned something. You, my friend, have just said something that is worth of a fatherless user on Twitter and re I'm sorry of a fatherless user on Twitter. So let me prove you wrong. One Piece. The beauty of One Piece. Is the fact that it's very long, but it has consistency. It's good. And along the way, it has become the highest grossing manga of all time. Like you see, like one of the biggest anime memes is the four kids rap. Like, Yayo, Yayo, Heroes of the Story. That, that speak, that speak anime. We're going to do a karaoke of that later. But that speak anime. <laughs> And so I rest my case here, saying that One Piece has everything that you would love in shonen anime. It has good fights, it has good music, it has good characters, character development, music, intro, openings, outros, uh, big titty women, I mean, uh, characters, everything that you want, it has in <laughs> One Piece. Do you have anything else to add, Mr. McDonald's? <sighs> Fairy tales better. No? Yes? <laughs> so that was a very fun first version of the Savvy Court. We had some technical difficulties because this program that I'm currently using sucked a very big ass. So let's just uh, press F in the chat. This is going to probably be in our premiere for all of our lost jokes. And we lost many jokes, but we made a new friend along the way, which was... My man, Mikel, which, can we have, like, uh, I'm gonna put this editing, uh, an applause, I'm just gonna do my applause for Mikel for being an amazing guest. I'm so bowing applause. right now. But, <laughs> we got, um, a decent applause, we're gonna put some decent applauses. The least I can do is embarrass myself, because I had something very bad planned. I'm going to sing the four kids one piece rep. Uh, I'm oh, sorry. you were serious. I, I oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to record this test, test, test. I'm going to have some. I, I'm very sorry, like, put your headphones very low because I suck at singing and I also have a raspy voice because I have to deal with children in the morning. 
Oh, that sounded very bad. I said, I have a raspy <laughs> voice because of children in the morning. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I have the lyrics here. Three, and then I'm going to edit the music. Three, two, one. There once was a man named Gold Roger who was king of the pirates. He had fame, power, and wealth beyond your wildest dreams. Before they hanged him from the gallows. These were the final words he said. My fortune is yours from the taking, but you'll have to find it first. I left everything I own in one piece. Ever since, pirates from all the world set set sail for the Grand Line searching for One Piece, the treasure that will make your dreams come true. Yeah yo! Yeah yo! Dreamin', don't give it up Luffy, dreamin', don't give it up Solo, dreamin', don't give it up Navi, dreamin', don't give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up, no! Here's how a story goes without doubt, how about the treasure in the ground line? <laughs> okay, let's get back. This is Luffy, that's Monkey D Luffy gonna be, the the birds. How did that happen? Yo, 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 he's the friend cup. Nah, I'm, I'm just gonna stop. I'm just gonna stop. <laughs> that was... <laughs> <laughs> is probably just gonna hate me right now. He's gonna say, oh my god, this fucker had to sing this time too. I hadn't seen the channel since the Mario Kart DS uh, Christmas video. Have you seen that? Oh my god, you you sung before? Whoa, I need to yeah, see that. Yeah, it was the 12 days of Mario Kart DS. It went something like... Um, on the first day of playing, the escape to me, Waluigi, Bimbo, four unlockable characters, three more cards, two more, yeah, I, I know it from memory, it's, it's incredible, and it's a terrible song, so please don't look it up. Oh, no, no, I have to, I think there's, there's some... <laughs> so yeah, but bye bye, ladies and gentlemen, we're not gonna see this. <laughs> no. uh, <laughs> uh, you, you, you really want to see it? Yes. Okay, I'm going to share your screen then. So, this is not gonna be the Savvy Show Mikel, as this is gonna change the title, it's just gonna be Savvy embarrasses himself and is a piece of shit for uh, way too much. <laughs> Savvy is amazing, Savvy's based! Am I based? Am I poggers? Savvy's poggers! <laughs> That's right, Mikel said I'm poggers! Okay, I'm going to share my screen, hoping that you're going to see it. Okay, you're probably gonna hear the audio too. Can you see this? I can. Okay, can you hear it? I can. You can? Yep. Okay. So my voice sounded very weird too, so yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> I can watch no. it later if you want me to. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm, we're gonna do this reaction right now. <laughs> oh my god, why? <laughs> DS gave to me. This was like one of my first videos, it was so shitty. <laughs> It's nice, I like it, I like it. I mean, the fifth day is the best. I already spoiled, but it's the best part. F. I forgot to write that. <laughs> like, that was how bad it was. I super rushed this video. Okay, are you ready for the best part of the video? I am, I am, 100%. Wow, Luigi! <laughs> oh my god. Why is this video still up? And this goes <laughs> far too long. Like, you can see by, like, in the end, I very, very could struggle coming up with anything. Like, okay, let's... Okay, let's see. The 12th day of playing DS, what do you think will be all the numbers? I have, I'm, I'm clueless. I, I have nothing left to guess. <laughs> okay, so we have twelve coins in seven seven. <laughs> I was like, I need a twelve. Someone song. <laughs> <laughs> I took this. 
11 dead online servers. There was, only one. there was only one. Then, a 10 out of 10 experience. That is a non 10. 9 epic moments. This sounds like a Watch Mojo thing. This sounds like Watch Mojo. Eight covers. <laughs> That's right. Not one, not two. Eight. <laughs> Seven mission tiers. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> I want to die so much. Three more cards, two battle modes. I don't know if you could hear like that. That was my headphones back in the day when he didn't used to have like the a nice microphone. <laughs> I think the funniest part of that entire video was when you just had F. <laughs> <laughs> like, I forgot. And then, like, this was like a, a social experiment. Happy holidays. Comment out of context that Joseph Joyster wants to your lasagna to check if anybody con commented. And then, bellissimo video. Guess who tested positive? That's the comments. <laughs> 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 yes, I'm not even kidding. Yes, who tested? <laughs> what the hey, fire? you you said comment, you said comment out of context. Yeah, like, <laughs> and he said, "That's right, guys, comment party." <laughs> this video is the worst thing I've ever done because it drugs out for so long. Like, oh yeah, I made a scuff the walls joke because this was one of the videos that I tried to do unscripted. Hey y'all, savvy here. Yes. What the hell? Hey and I'm going to say that she will be able to play that game. Yeah, and I also like made that this game, game blows joke. Why did I make uh, that joke? <laughs> oh my god. And, like, I've never played Chibi games Robo. Games like I said, games. yeah, I don't I I, I have never played the game, but it's shit because Scott the was say so. My grandma can be and there was like this <laughs> attempt Someone at an anime joke. Game. That got me copyrighted, so I'm not gonna play this. That's, that's, that's the entire joke. And then this part is the worst part. I say, and I quote, What I'm trying to say is, I don't want to be a money machine YouTuber. With this, I mean that I'm going to put clickbait videos, big errors, and circling timelines. Don't expect daily weekly videos, because a good video takes time. And this was the shittiest video I've made. So this was the most hypocrite thing I could ever see. If I'm being honest, you were still you were still saying things that were true. <laughs> so, there's just a way. Uh, like, do you want to add anything else to like this this episode of the Savvy Show? I would. Uh, I would like to add this. Savvy is an amazing person, and he is very funny, very wholesome. And if you don't subscribe to uh, Savvy right now and watch his favorite anime, Camphor, I, I think that you you need to jump into a well full of neurotoxin and you eat the bottom of people's shoes. So subscribe to Savvy and watch Camphor. Done deal. Done deal. <laughs>